Hey guys, I want to take you through this example problem where we have to do some vector addition. In this case, we're adding multiple displacement vectors uh, to find a resultant vector or a single displacement vector that could effectively replace all, all these movements. So in this example, uh, it's similar to our vector treasure hunt. Uh, we've got a, a toy, Tomator, uh, from uh, Cars. Uh, I believe it's Cars. And uh, he's hidden in the room somewhere, and we have on cards uh, to his location. And so we have displacement vectors, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw them individually. Uh, our first vector uh, is going to be 4 meters north, and I can draw that as a vector arrow straight upwards of length 4. Again, vectors are drawn as arrows. The length is the magnitude, or how much, 4 meters, and then we draw the arrow in the direction it should go. Our second vector is going to be 3 meters west. That's going to be slightly shorter. It's going to be straight to the left. Again, west being left on our screen would be our normal convention. We'll have a, a vector one meter south. should be our shortest vector. If that one's three, it should be about that long and directed straight downward. And then our fourth vector is one at an angle. And it's going to be the longest vector because it's five meters. And it's 40 degrees west of south. So again, these, the directions west of south tells us to face south and then go west of there. So west of there, that would map out about 40 degrees in this direction. 45 would be about here. We're probably about, at this location, 5 meters long. That should be a longer arrow than our red one. And we have these four displacements. So we're effectively going to add all these steps together. And what most of you should do, like any problem, is set up and draw a picture of what is going to happen, uh, which should be pretty straightforward. Uh, in a problem like this. Now, let me label on here my angle, right? And so, really, they gave us a reference from south. That would be 40 degrees. And the length of this is 5 meters. The length of the green vector is 1 meter. The blue vector is 3 meters. And the red vector is 4 meters as well. And what we would typically do in a problem like this is we're going to have a starting location. If we, if we do it graphically, we can set up a picture of what we should expect. So if I started right here and call that my initial position, we'll call that I, my first step would be to take my red vector and go north four meters. Then I would my, do the following step, which would continue from that position, and I would go west three meters. And so I'm going to basically take those same vectors and redraw them. Then I would go south one meter, and we're right there. And then my last vector is going to be at an angle, 40 degrees at about 5. So somewhere right around there. And um, my vector is a little bit out, all over the place here. Let me try to move them over just so we can see them all. right? And this means that my final position would be at the tip of that last one. And again, we always add vectors from tail to tip, and really just in order as if you're linking them as a chain. Sorry for this interruption. I'm doing this in school. Our resultant vector is always going to go from the initial position, which is the tail of the first vector, to the tip of the last vector. That's what we would call our resultant. And I'm going to label that R. And the resultant vector is going to be at an angle. And it depends on how you want to do it. I can call it this small angle theta. Or I can measure the angle from the south we can call that alpha. So either angle would be an effective angle to describe the direction of the resultant. And the length of that vector is how far you would travel to go from your starting position to the finishing position. So graphically, that's what I would expect. It looks like R is probably around 5 meters, if you look at the length of those vectors, and maybe an angle of 15 or 20 degrees south of west. Again, west being to the left. Now, what I would recommend to get the actual values is to set up an X and Y table to organize our vectors. So I'm going to set up a table with X and Y direction. And I'm going to add these different vectors. That red one A, the blue one B, the green one C, and the gray one D. And we're going to basically describe each of those vectors in terms of their direction in the X and Y. So vector A, the 4 meters north, doesn't go anywhere in the X but it goes up, or positive 4 in the y. The blue vector goes left 3, so negative 3 in the x, and it goes nowhere in the y. The green vector goes down in the y, 
and nowhere in the X. The blue one, or the gray one's where we have a little bit of an issue because it's not in the X or Y, it's in a combination. And so if I zoom in on that vector, what I really need to do is look at the component vectors here. And so we should have a Y component, right? This would be vector D in the Y direction, and an X component that goes from the tip of that one that way. This would be vector D in the X. And for call, this is take a little bit of trig. Now, this is a special case because the angle is measured from the vertical. But if I do my trig, compared to that angle, this is my adjacent side. This is my opposite side. And this would be my hypotenuse. And so the trig would say that the, the cosine of 40 would equal adjacent over hypotenuse. And so 5 times the cosine of 40 would be what dy is. And if I pull out my calculator, I can get an actual value. 5 cosine 40 is 3.83. This has a length of 3.83. And the x direction, so I had a y there, I'll erase that, make it an x, is going to be 5. And that, since it's the opposite side, opposite would be sine of 40 degrees. And 5 sine 40 is 3.21. Now, if you recall with, with projectile motion, usually the y side was the sine and the x was the cosine. But if you notice, this angle is measured from a vertical reference rather than a horizontal one. And as a result, those get flipped. So be careful when we're adding vectors that you don't fall into our patterns that we saw in projectiles and actually look at the trig to determine which one is actually the adjacent side, which in this case is the y and the x is the opposite. So the trig tells me how long those components are, which corresponds to the how far. Right? But what we need to do to put it into our tables, look at the direction of the arrows. The y arrow points down, and the x arrow points left. So we actually get negative component vectors that point left and down in our table. Again, those signs are really important, and again, drawing the arrows really is helpful to tell you which direction. Down is negative and left is negative, so that both components are negative. So now we have all four vectors in the table, and since the x direction, we can add everything up, they're all organized that way. So I'm gonna add all my x components together, and I'm gonna get a total x component of negative 6.21, and a total y component of, it looks like, negative 0.8 three if I add that all up. And this is for my resultant R. And negative 6.21 would be the X component of the resultant. And this would be the Y component of the resultant. So from this point, now I've simplified all these motions, A, B, C, and D, into two steps, one in the X, one in the Y, that would get us to a resultant final position. And so I'm going to take these resultants, and I'm going to actually plot them quickly. And the x component is going to be 6 to the left. So I'll draw a vector about 6 long. So this is a length of 6.21. I don't need the negative anymore because my arrow accounts for it. And then in the y direction, again, from the tip of the last, I'm going down about 0.83. 0 0.83 is how far. And they meet at a right angle because they're x and y. And my resultant, again, this would be my initial position. This would be where I would finish if I made those two steps. My resultant vector will go from the tail to first, the initial position, to the tip of the last. So this will be my resultant vector r. And as I've drawn it, it would make sense to call this my angle that I want to get, which would be the angle from the initial position. And now it's a trig problem. The resultant r, the magnitude of r, is going to be, using Pythagorean theorem, the square root of the x component plus the, the y component, each of those squared, which is going to give me the square root of 6.21 squared plus 0 0.83 squared. Again, I don't need the negatives in there. It wouldn't matter anyways because it's getting squared. But since we're dealing with trig, we're just dealing with side lengths. The negative sides only told us what direction to draw the arrows. So again, when we're doing these calculations with the trig, you never need the negatives in those values. 
So let me do a little math here. This is going to be 6.21 squared plus 0.83 squared. And I'll take the square root of that answer. And I get 6.27. So the magnitude of R, how long it is, is 6.27 meters, which makes sense. That looks about right. It should be longer than that X piece. And the last thing I need is to find the angle theta. And we know that I have the opposite and the adjacent. Technically, I have all three sides. So I can use any trig function. But I'm going to use the calculated x and y pieces. And that says that the tangent of theta would equal the opposite over the adjacent, which means the tangent of theta would equal 0 0.83 over 6.21. And if I'm solving for the angle, that's where the inverse function comes into play. So I'm going to do the inverse tangent of that ratio, 0 0.83 over 6.21. And when I do second tangent, I get the inverse tangent, 0.83 divided by 6.21. And I get an angle. Make sure you're in degree mode. It should be a pretty small angle, which it is, 7.61 degrees. Now, I'm not done there. All I know is the magnitude and an angle, but I need to actually tell you what R is. So R, the resultant, would be a displacement of 6.27 meters at an angle of 7.61 degrees. And that angle is measured, if you would, to measure that angle, you would point west and go south of west. So I'm going to say this is south of west. I could also say it's counterclockwise from west as another reference. Uh, now, you might have drawn your x and y components by drawing the y piece first and then the x piece. And you end up with the same triangle and the same resultant. What changes, though, is we get a different angle. That would be alpha. And that would be the complement of 7.61. If I took 90 minus that answer, that should be what alpha is, 82.39. So I could say it's also 82.39 degrees, but that angle would be measured west of south. So either direction would get you onto the same line to then walk 6.27 meters. So I just want to show you that depending on how you draw your X and Y components, which one you draw first, will change what angle is inside that triangle. But as long as you have the words to direct that angle, you're going to have the object get to the right location. So again, if I start at my starting location and turn 7.61 degrees south of west and then walk 6.27 meters, that should take me to the location of our hidden Tomator toy truck. Hope this makes sense. I'll zoom out and let you see the work. Now, this is a process we're going to follow for any, for any uh, vector addition problem. And this is a good common one with one of them at an angle that you have to break into the X and Y pieces. Hope this is helpful. Take care.